From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. Once again, we have some dynamite headlines for you from around the world. This first one, Americans take up designer religion. I've never heard that before, but we're going to talk much about that on this program. Also, Europe and the United States warned that suicide bombers are on the way. That's very sobering, I know. And Russia and China to hold joint military exercises together, buddies. And why is that? Jack is going to be revealing so very, very much about Russia and China and the tie that they have in just a moment. But I was amazed to read that we have reached our seventh billionth person on Earth. Take a look. And baby makes seven billion. Did you ever see a sweeter face? Little one born in India. Human beings are minds, not mouths. How wonderful it is to take a look at that baby. We reached the seventh billion on Earth. Beautiful, beautiful babies. Now Jack said to me, you know what? I have something I want to share about babies. And so uh, I know, I think he's going to get into some humor here a little bit, aren't you, Jack? Oh, Rexella, I get a kick out of this. This Roman Catholic priest was visiting some of his parishioners. And the wife and husband said, oh, Father, please pray that we'll have children. We just can't seem to have a child. And he said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to the Vatican. And while I'm there, I'll light a candle on your behalf. And they said, oh, thank you. Two years passed. He said, I'm going to go over and visit these folks and see how things have happened. And when he walked in, he said, did my prayers work? Oh, Father, the candle worked. And lo and behold, we have had two sets of twins. He said, well, wonderful. Let me shake your husband's hand. Let me congratulate him. She says, oh, he's not here. He went to the Vatican to blow the candles out. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And then the other one is, three ministers were talking about when life begins. And the one said, when the egg is fertilized. The second one said, at conception. And the third one, I understand, was my vice president, announcer, Chuck Holman, who said, life begins when the kids leave home. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy, how true that is. <laughs> oh, my, Jack. Well, you know, as I always say, it's good to have a little bit of humor up front here. In America, do you know how many people we have? 310 million. Now, remember the beautiful singer Kate Smith of years ago, how she used to sing, God bless America? Well, if she were to come back now, she couldn't sing, God bless America. She would have to sing, God's, plural, bless America. Americans take up designer religion. Now we are, since World War II, Kate Smith sang, God bless America. But her anthem today would have to be, God's, bless America. I want to ask Jack something about that. If there are many gods and so many people are praying to different gods, is there just one God, one Savior? Are these people all saved, Jack, or is it one way to heaven? Absolutely not. They're lost because there's only one way. But they said there could be 310 million religions now, and I don't doubt that because in India alone there are 100 million gods. Each man has one for himself practically. However, Proverbs 21, 2 says, every man did that which was right in his own eyes, and there's just too much of these new young people saying, oh, we just believe in spirituality. They don't know the first word as far as the meaning of it is concerned. And by the way, if you study this book, every time it talks about religion, it's connected with evil. There's only one verse that justifies religion and it's James 127 pure religion and that pure religion has to do with the Lord Jesus Christ Luke in Acts 4 12 says neither is there salvation in any other for there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved and that precious name is Jesus 
And of course, Galatians 3.26 says, you're all the children of God. No, it doesn't say that. Finish the verse. We're all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. There will be a lot of lost people in that day because 400 times this book says Jesus is the only way. And 700 times it says it's his precious blood shed on the cross that saves. There is no other way, for without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins, Hebrews 9.22. Oh, Jake, that's so very, very plain. Well, I do have a question. You know, the ground zero, they want to do some things there that would cause different denominations, different religions to come together and pray together and be praying to different gods. Would be the, this be the right thing to do, Jack? Absolutely not, because of the first commandment of God, which states, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. I, Yahweh, am the God, the true God. Now, I am told that when they had that meeting, and it was held in one of the Christian churches, Episcopalian, that they came from all the different religions. Now that is not what we are supposed to do. To whom do you pray? India, as I already said, has a hundred million gods. What a jumbled up mess would occur as they're praying. And I'm going to tell you this. We have a book that says, Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. All right? Why? Who are the unbelievers? Let Jesus answer that. John 8, 24, Jesus said, You die in your sins. Why? Because you believe not in me. I'm the one to whom you pray. As you pray to my Father in Jesus' name. My name, and when it's in my name, I'll answer. So no, we can't. That's why Romans 16, 17 says, Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you've received, and avoid them. What's the doctrine? That Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The only way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. Mm, it's very, very plain, Jack. And you know, the early church stood up for that verse, John 14, 6. In fact, they gave their lives. But today we seem to have an air of compromise, of putting together all kinds of religions. Uh, Bill Mullenberg has written a very interesting article here, and I'd like to put it on the screen. Perhaps you'd like to read it there for us, Jack. Powerful. It's what you were talking about. We find today many who claim to be followers of Jesus. Unlike the early church where there was fierce resistance to any sort of religious compromise or fuzzy syncretism. We have today all sorts of wishy-washy beliefs and interfaith foolishness. Christians are tripping over themselves to just get along with those of other faiths. They are bending over backwards to, not to offend any non-believers those of different religious traditions. Thus, they are quite happy to get rid of any Christian symbols so that they can appear relevant, trendy, and non-threatening. God forgive them. Oh, yes, I should say amen to that. That's very, very strong, isn't it? And thank the Lord so much that he has the courage to speak out like Jack Van Ippy does. Well, now, many Protestant churches, as well as Catholic, are upholding the cross and they're saying that we need to get the message out around the world. Now Operation Mobilization is such an organization trying to do this at the foot of the cross. There you see the Vermeers. They're going around the world. You see the cross there? They are presenting this around the world that Jesus is the way of salvation. And then from the Observatory Romano, New Life from the Cross. Great Catholic magazine. Yes, and the cry of anguish that opens the heavens. Now here's something. That's what Jack was talking about. C3 Exchange takes down the cross. Here's somebody, and it is the community church in Spring Lake here in Michigan, willing to say, we'll take the cross down. And many of those churches are collapsing because people are leaving, saying, I came here to worship the Lord, not take it down. And here's Campus Crusade for Christ that has changed its name to CRU, Crew. This organization started in 1951, and now they've changed the name to what? What in the world does that mean? Well, I just want to say when you take the cross down, friends, is that blasphemy? saying that we don't need the cross anymore. 
we can work our way to heaven. All faith will eventually get to heaven. That's what they're literally saying. Jack, is that blasphemous? One of the greatest uh, theologians in Australia said the reason that Islam wants to get rid of the cross is because when they do, that's the symbol that Islam has been victorious over Christianity because they hate the cross. Now, I've said it so often, but you know who the prophet Jesus is, and I'm going to tell the world this repeatedly. Oh, they love Jesus like we do. Really? First of all, this Jesus returns and says, I'm not a God, I'm not a deity, I fooled all of you. I did not go to a cross, I rigged it all. He goes on then to say, I am now an evangelist for Allah because I've been converted and I'm sorry I ever started Christianity and I'm here to destroy every cross, that on which I supposedly died. And it goes on to say, and this comes right from Sheikh Kabani, who heads up Islam in America, who says when the prophet Jesus comes, he is the chief lieutenant to Mahdi, the Messiah of Ahmadinejad of Iran. And it will be his job to put to death all Jews and Christians who won't convert. That's what they teach, and I'm going to let the world know so that you know. And I have to do this because tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands worldwide are new viewers every week. But here's what I want to say about it. You're in trouble with God. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish. Foolishness. But unto us which are saved, that's the power of God unto salvation. Colossians 1.20 says, Christ made peace through the blood of his cross. And if you try to put a different thing in the place of the cross, you are in trouble because you become an enemy of the cross of Christ. Philippians 3.18, and there's great hour coming when we will be persecuted because of the message of the cross. Galatians 6.12, and Paul could say in verse 14 of that same chapter, God forbid that I should glory in anything else but the precious cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you folks that are creating your own religion better get the old-time religion from the Word of God or you'll never see the insides of heaven. Jack, I love that last verse. That's tremendous by the Apostle Paul. Yeah. I guess I never really absorbed it like yeah. I did just now. That is wonderful. You know, friends, something is going around now, right now, and it is the idea it's a false security being propagated saying that we have nothing, nothing to fear. Now, we're going to examine that statement about uh, being safe in just a moment, but look at what Brian Kennedy, the president of the Claremont Institute, has written, and I think it's very, very good. We are often told that we possess the most powerful military in the world, that we will face no serious threat for some time to come. We're comforted with three reassurances aimed at deflecting any serious discussion of national security, that number one, Islam is a religion of peace. Number two, that we will never go to war with China because our economic interests are intertwined. Number three, that America won the Cold War and Russia's no longer our enemy. Do you notice those three things there, friends? But these reassurances are myths propagated on the right and left alike. We believe them at our peril because serious threats are already up on us. Let's go on here and see if he is right. Stats show a world less violent, more peaceful. Now that is on the one side. Let's go on. Is this right? Iran urges worldwide Islamic revolt. Again, the Islamist threat inside our military. That to me is very serious. Radical Muslims gaining foothold in the Middle East. And Al-Qaeda linked militants kill 70 in Mogadishu. Oh, how sad. Islamists in Somalia strike at African troops. Again, Somalia famine. United Nations warns of 750,000 deaths. 